the exhibition think tank club what we are taking really pride in is um, that we don't have a hierarchy in the club we only have skills and we have ideas and we have good discussions nice. so so great show today matthias welcome to the show uh, i'm reading tessie why does everybody call you tessie Oh, uh, that's a story that goes back to a time before I had a developed memory. Actually, it was uh, a nickname my sisters invented for me when I was six months old, when I was a baby wow. and couldn't fight back on it. Mm -hmm. And it stick to me. So normally everybody calls me Tazy. Some people call me Matthias. Call me as you want. You can choose. All right. All right, Matthias, tell us a little bit about ETT. What's the idea behind the exhibition think tank? Exhibition. So you have chosen Matthias, very good. Um, the ETT Club uh, is the exhibition think tank club that came out of an initiative uh, my company did uh, back in April when the crisis was still very new. We, cre we yeah. created a crisis recovery guide at this point and we sent the crisis recovery guide to all our friends and clients in the exhibition industry and had then a lot of calls with people who wanted to discuss with us how to react, how to act in the crisis, how to come out of the crisis eventually. And in all these calls, it was quite clear very quickly that nobody knows what's going on and what will the future look like in the industry. So the idea was pretty quickly born that we should do a think tank to discuss how should our industry react to the crisis and how should we come out of the crisis? So we did a think tank with around 140 people um, with four sprints. It was a very intensive exercise where we discussed how to save the industry. So a very small mission at the end of the day, but we released an amazing report. And during the crisis, it became also clear that we just started a discussion that one think tank is not enough. And that was the reason why we turned the whole thing into a club, into the exhibition think tank club, where we have ongoing think tanks, where we have ongoing workshops, where we do ongoing collaboration and innovation. And just a month ago, the association UFI joined us as a partner. So the exhibition think tank club is now um, co-managed and co-owned by MBB Consulting, by my company, and by Ufi, and we are approaching the 500 member mark. Wow. So we really hit a, hit a nail on the head of saying, okay, we need a new collaboration platform to innovate in the industry. Absolutely, absolutely. I think in, indeed the, the lack of visibility that everybody had on, on what's going to happen next, it wasn't, it wasn't so much of uh, uh, there's a crisis and we're losing, uh, we're losing the momentum. It was more of we don't really know what's next. I mean, even if you take governments, the reaction of governments was unpredictable from one week to the other. Like one week we're going to lock down, the other week we're not going to lock down. I've seen exhibitions cancel while our we 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 ran a company of we we run a company of stand builders like we had the trucks already loaded. Yeah, the exhibition yeah. was closed five days five days just before the build up started. Right, so there was a lot of uncertainty, and I think indeed the um, the uh, the initiative that you started is something critical for for to, to provide some insight and actually some common sense kind of know how that we acquired through experience but it's not accessible to the others and to see how our industry is going to move forward. So congratulations on this, really. Like that's, uh, that's so refreshing. I am, a, I am a member of it. I'm not a gold member yet. I'm hoping to do, <laughs> but I am a member of it since day one. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, Matthias, what, would, what can we say? Because I, I read a little bit about your company and you can touch a little bit about MBB, what you guys do. What would you say for companies today that, uh, are basically trying to navigate, uh, and I'm talking when I say companies, I'm talking about exhibitors uh, mostly, and basically our clients, and the reason why uh, trade shows. What would you say to them when they're trying to navigate between online and actually trying to still go to some exhibitions? Is there any discoveries that you made on? the efficiencies of the recent online events. Have you guys been monitoring some online events? Do you have some insight about how efficient they are? Or... Yeah, absolutely. So what we did in summer um, after the first think tank was over and when we started the club, 
um, we conducted a so-called summer sprint under the topic find the best hybrid event. And to prepare this summer sprint, uh, MBB Consulting, my company, we have created a framework how to judge and how to rate a hybrid event. And in this framework, we listed all um, channels, all online channels that exist from blog, from podcast, a little bit what you and I are doing at the moment, up to directories, to virtual stands, to webinars and so on. And then we listed these channels against exhibitor motivations like brand building, lead generation, customer relation management, easy of execute, reach, and so on. And then we gave every online channel a rating against every exhibitor motivation. By creating this framework, we were in the position to look at hybrid trade show websites or at virtual trade show websites and really see how deep does an offer of an exhibition organizer goes to serve the motivations of the exhibitors. Absolutely. And we scanned over 70 websites mm -hmm. and we scanned the whole food trade show um, sector. So um, uh, trade shows like Sial or like Anuga or other trade shows. And it is very, very eye-opening to see how different exhibition websites are at the moment. Some exhibition websites serve the, the motivation of an exhibitor like networking very, very well. Other trade show websites ignore this motivation absolutely and entirely. So which is reflecting that we are in an experimental phase. It's reflecting that the exhibition organizers are experimenting to find the right offer to the exhibitors, but it gives exhibitors also the opportunity to say, I'm, for example, I'm a food exhibitor. I have 30 food uh, trade shows, yeah. trade show websites I could engage with, which website is actually offering what I need because my business hasn't stopped even in the crisis. I still want to reach my clients. I still want to promote my products. I still want to be visible in the industry. Mm. And that was quite a good exercise, this, this um, hunt for the best hybrid event. And we found also some good, we found many websites which are not good to be very open and frank, but we also found some best practice examples, which is very encouraging. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it's still, there's a, you, you, you still think that there's a lack of consistency and this is maybe due totally. to the, yeah, maybe due to the experimentation. So um, yeah. I think, yeah, that's what we discussed with, um, with Larry also, uh, when we discussed that about five months ago, is that the online, the online uh, industry, the online event uh, has not yet been able, I've visited mo some and some, for example, have a chat bot that engages with you and then you can chat with the person, some others you can click and you can actually access like a, uh, a small uh, Zoom uh, room where there are five people, some others you can click and then you can access directly your client's phone number and then you can call them to the office. They have somebody in the office that is specialized and just sitting waiting for calls from people that are visiting the platform. But there's still this emotional uh, factor and you and I both know sales and marketing, we, people buy emotions. How do you Absolutely. think... How, how do you think um, because I'm still betting that we're social animals. And at some point, even though there are some uh, business travel will be reduced by 50%, I think. Like instead of coming to Germany or you coming to Bulgaria, we're going to be able to make decisions over Zoom. But I still don't know how you're going to taste uh, the cheese I make or the honey I make over the internet. And how, how are you going to make an emotional decision about, about buying or engaging a car on the internet or how are you going to make an emotional decision even even buying clothing like the clothing industry now today is is a little bit uh, challenged with this so wh where do you where do you see this going let's say in the in the short term because i think we're going to see more and more hybrid events but where do you see it in the short term what are the two or three observations you can make on the short term for companies that are like okay we'll see in five years what's going to happen but now, how do I, what, how, how can I make effective decisions about this? I think there is a short term view and there is a mid term view. And I'm very hopeful that we get the mid term view very soon back in, in March uh, 2021, April 2021. We can start 
opening the first exhibitions in Europe and America again, as the people in Asia or China are doing it already now. In the short term, we are in a, in a bridge phase. So it was um, live events will not be re replaced through digital for exactly the reason you are saying. We are emotional animals. We want to drive a car before we buy the car. We want to wear a clothes be before we want to wear a clothes. And this is our habit when we are consumers. It's even more our habit when we buy 10,000 pieces of clothes for our shops. So when we do B2B business and we really want, we spend millions. So then we really want to know I spend millions of money. Do I buy a good quality, which I want to pass on at the end to my customers? For that, we need to watch each other in the eyes. We need to shake the hands. We need to, we need to have this really good feeling. So once trade shows are allowed, they will come back. There is absolutely no doubt. There is one change that will happen is that trade show is hopefully not the only touch point anymore an exhibition organizer is offering to their clients. Okay. It will be the most important touch point and it will be an unreplaceable touch point, but it will be not the only touch point. And that is exactly the difference to hybrid events. So a trade show organizer like Informa or like Read Exhibitions, they need to offer a journey of touch points to their exhibitors and visitors. And on the, on the first part of the journey, these touch points are digital and these touch points are nurturing the target groups to come to the big touch point, which is the exhibition. The big change in thinking is so far exhibition organizers are in their culture, single event people. So our event is an exhibition and that happens once a year. It's a single event, it's the most important event. And all our processes are designed to this one single event. Yes. When we talk about a customer journey where we have many touch points, digitally, hybrid, then live the exhibition, then again digitally, then again hybrid, we need to move on from a single event mindset mm -hmm. to a multi-event mindset and all events together are creating that journey. That is a big difference, but we will see the difference very soon. We also will see new players. Yes. It's uh, easier for new players to enter this market. But if the big companies understand that their product is bro a brutally good product, but they need to they need to enhance the product through hybrid elements, then they are in a really good position to offer this journey. Mm -hmm. What do we do? That didn't answer your question. Um, you yeah. asked for short term. Um, what we need to do in the short term is um, we need to bridge that time until we come to the point where we can uh, where we can uh, offer the journey to our customers, and in this bridging the time, we need to do better digital events. We need to do better hybrid events. It needs to be much focused or to be concrete. We should not offer webinars anymore where we say hopefully five hundred people sign up. Hopefully yeah. 200 people of the people yeah. signed up, turn yeah. up to the event. Absolutely. Then we give them an average panel discussion about topic A, topic B, and so on. No, it needs to be much higher quality. It needs to be much more focused that you say to stick with the example of the food industry to say, for example, I have 100 exhibitors in that and that segment, let's say in organic food. Yeah. I do an innovation tour, an online innovation tour. And from this 100 exhibitors, I show only five, but I show the five best. And I show the five best in very curated content only to 30 people. Mm -hmm. So you add exclusivity and you add urgency to your digital product. Suddenly, you don't want to have the 500 people signed up anymore. Suddenly you can charge your exhibitors because it's exclusive to five exhibitors out of 100. And you can charge the audience because you said, this is really created and curated content I provide for you. It has a value. If you do it now, you bridge this time. And if you do it now, you also skill up your team by creating these touch points on the journey I talked about beforehand. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not an easy journey, but, but we have to do that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I heard one time in, a, in an interview Somebody was saying, I don't remember the name of the person, but basically that was saying that today is a crisis. The crisis that we're having today is a crisis that actually is not a uh, economic crisis as much as it is, but it's a behavioral crisis. 
And it means that it's actually touching us on the behavior that we, we, we have. And it's gonna shift in our behavior um, one paradigm where in the, in the world where everything is available and everything was like fast, 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 fast. Now we're gonna look for some more exclusive and premium kind of uh, uh, approach Absolutely. where we would like to feel more special. And, uh, and if we want to feel more special, that means that uh, uh, that means that companies should target their clients in a more personalized way where every client has to have access. And when you feel special is when you have access. What good of a conference is it for me if I participate and I'm number 57 over uh, 1,200, right? And then the conference ends and then we take a picture on Zoom and then it's posted to social media and nothing happens next, right? And then yeah, I move absolutely. on to the next one and the next one and the next one. Better yet, have a 10 people room where I can actually access directly the marketing manager of this company that I'm interested in doing business with. And that will be more effective than actually going on in this. And so, as you said, I think the curation is, I, I really think the next big businesses that we knew in the 1900s, in the beginning of the last century, the big businesses, the Rockefeller, like the Coca-Cola, those companies, I think the new Coca-Colas for the next hundred years are going to be built the same way our grandparents built the business. Like you remember and when, when, you, when, you, when you were a kid, uh, they will be built like our grandparents built the businesses. So when you were a kid, you used to go to the grocery store down the street and he knows who you are, who your mother is. He knows that uh, she sent with him, I, I'm going to say Dutch marks <laughs> back the time, right? You have 10 Dutch marks and he knows what you need. He wraps everything in a bag. Here you go, and then you go home, and you were maybe nine years old. And I think the same personalization is going to be required from companies because uh, we're becoming a little bit more responsible consumers, I believe, with uh, this crisis. Yeah, and I don't think it makes the old model um, obsolete. I think it's yeah. not replacing the old model. I think it's enhancing the old yes. model. I think we still will have the big exhibitions yes. with many with many exhibitors and, and many visitors yes. coming through the door. I think that will continue maybe with um, some environmental concerns, maybe less so. That is absolutely possible, but we can enhance this model through exactly personalized experience, smaller personalized experience alongside the journey of this bigger experience where you said, hey, you have been at my exhibition, you had the atmosphere, you saw the variety of exhibitors, you could talk to your competitors, clients and everything. And now I have a digital format because I know you are specifically interested in these or that segment or topic. Now I have done this specifically for you and this is a smaller group exactly. of people so exactly. you can do the the big experience with a personalized experience and we talk about personalized experience since 10 years mm. we just haven't done it so no, far but so that crisis yeah. gives a chance to do that yeah the situation is actually forcing us into this okay uh let's jump into the organization uh ett uh what are what are today the 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 most beneficiary people of this organization who are your clients who are the people that you are actually bringing the most value to that can join in? The Exhibition Think Tank Club, what we are taking really pride in is um, that we don't have a hierarchy in the club. Okay. We only have skills and we have ideas and we have good discussions. Nice. So everybody is welcome in the Exhibition Think Tank Club and it gives really purpose and also pride to people because beforehand the marketing manager from America, how often could he discuss a marketing problem with a marketing manager from India or from exactly. Thailand? Exactly. So this is, this is exactly the purpose to bring the people, the hands-on people who are the frontline people of the exhibition industry, yeah. the one who really talk to the customers, who really launch the shows, who make the shows better, who think about their show strategy, about the digital strategy, about value proposition, about how to create a good team to give them a platform across the entire world so that they can see like-minded people, meet like-minded people, and also discuss problems with like-minded people. I think this is a group, the mid-management 
and the rising stars in the company. These, this is our target group. And this is because the very, very senior absolutely. people, they have their networking opportunities. There yeah. is absolutely no doubt. Yeah. For sure, we welcome them as well in the exhibition think tank. But I think the biggest value comes really through for the mid-management people. Mm -hmm. And we, what we offer them is um, a series of micro workshops. We had, for example, just last week, a net education session. So the word is networking and education in which we talked, for example, about hybrid sales strategies, a little bit what we Pretty talked cool. about. Yeah. And then we are running bigger think tanks from time to time. We just had the touch point think tank where we talked about what are the new customer touch points. Yeah. I talked about the summer sprint where we try to find the best hybrid event. We are currently planning an inclusive leadership think tank where we want to talk about how can we diversify our workforce better, and so on. And in the um, organization of all these micro workshops and think tanks, um, we have split up the exhibition think tank into six sub subtopics, okay. like inclusive leadership, like digital and AI, like value proposition, like suppliers, like marketing. And we have um, working groups in for every subtopic. And when you become a member, then you can, you don't have to, but you can become a member of subgroups. So that way you can have a platform in the platform for yes. further networking. So this is how we organize ourselves. Nice, yeah. nice. That's very good because I, I actually am thinking about some of the exhibitions. I don't know if you heard of the Basel uh, um, uh, Watch show, the, the Basel. Yeah, sure. Basel the, World. The, the yeah. world, it was canceled yeah. because uh, the big shots uh, pulled out. I think uh, Rolex, uh, Patek Philippe, and I don't know which other company pulled out of the show. And so the show basically the next year was canceled. And I think it, indeed, like having the perspective of, uh, of the actual users of our services, not only the providers, but crossing between the actual client that is actually at the exhibition and that has a lot of remarks on the job of the organizer but also the organizer that has a, job, a lot of remarks on the job of the stand builders that are coming in, but also the stand yeah. builders that has a lot of remarks on the job of waste management. And I think waste management is gonna be one of the biggest topics to tackle in the next 20, 30 years of the exhibition industry. We, I, I don't think we can still build stands the way we're building stands, but go convince a big company from the US that they're not gonna have the biggest stand on the show anymore. And they're gonna have a stand made of a material that even the smallest stand is made of, right? So there is also this kind of point and positioning that is okay, like I cannot sell to a 500 square meter stand the same material and the same construction and design that I'm doing for a 20 square meter stand because, you know, like one of them will not feel so special anymore. And we're, we're entering in, in a lot of debates and indeed what you're, what you're touching on, these are the questions. These are the real questions that we're gonna have to figure out and answer. And, and I think that's the great initiative. So I'll include in any case in the description, the links to, uh, to ETT for people to join in. I think uh, Matthias will answer emails if you email him. I mean, he answered mine. Definitely, so, definitely. Uh, so you have access to, uh, to a panel of expertise and uh, the team there will guide you through those things. Matthias, what's next? Let's end it with something for the future. What would be next for you in, in this kind of, environment what would be next for mbb for ett for ufi i know you're involved in the in the online uh, university for uh, in the university yeah. for event management yeah that's uh, right and you're the, and you're training people and that that's ludicrous for me there's no other like i looked nobody's doing that nobody's teaching people in schools we we learn pr and communication but nobody teaches people how to run an in, an industry and i think right like it's it, it was so it's good. Breath, of, breath of fresh air when, when I learned about it. So what, what would be next? There are, two, there are two things that could be next. Is um, Option number one, and I really, really hope that this option will not come, is uh, the crisis is over and we go back to old normal. Mm -hmm. And that would mean that we kill ourselves long term if we go back to old normal because we haven't uh, worked on digitalization uh, well enough. We need to work, like you said, we need to work on environmental challenges. 
we need to uh, we will have a totally new customer group when generation z is in decision making positions then we have on our on our customer group people who can't remember a time before google for example and they will look on exhibitions with different eyes than we looked and our father generation looked at exhibitions and i think I love our industry. I grew up in this industry. I have an intensive network and friends in our industry. And I want that this industry exists since 800 years in Europe. And I want that this industry exists another 800 years in Europe because we are the engine for so many industries to keep industry going, to inspire industry, to stimulate industry and so on. So the exhibition industry as an industry engine is really needed. However, we have a lot of things that need to change. And the first thing tank, we actually identified over 30 fields that need to change in our industry. That's digitalization, but it's also workforce diversity. That is um, personalization. We touched on a couple of these things in our, in our conversation, which yeah. means option one going back to old normal would kill the industry long term so i hope we don't do it i hope we take this crisis really as a chance and mbb we try to do that as well we talk to a lot of our customers the exhibition think tank club is a baby of the crisis the exhibition think tank club would not exist if the crisis would not have happened. And I think we all continue and we work on the fields that need to change. We empower people, we have more diverse working forces, we bring people with other ideas into our industry. We are digitally better. We, um, we are very proactive when it comes to the environment. We are very proactive when it comes to value proposition for our customers. And we take the crisis as a true wake up call. And as a positive wake up call to say, we have so much to offer to the world. Let's offer it to Absolutely. the world and let's Absolutely. reinvent ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to end with this positive message that you just sent. I invite everybody to visit the website ETT. As you said, I'll include the, as you said, it's our Thank job you. today to, to provide our clients with and our exhibitors and the users and people that are visiting our events to provide them with a different approach that maintains the exhibition industry for the next. Uh, Matthias, thank you so much for uh, this interview. It was a privilege. Thank you very much. Can I include all the links uh, to, uh, in, the, in, the, in the description to your LinkedIn, to the association, to, the, to UFI, to ETT, to MBB Consulting. And I'm pretty sure that uh, we're going to move forward. And let's commit to speak next in the next six months to see what happens. Like, let's see if we were right in, in March. Let's do another. Absolutely. Episode, right? Absolutely. In March, we should bet a good bottle of wine on it. <laughs> absolutely. Let's bet a bottle of wine on it. And let's see what, on, uh, in March what's going to happen. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks for, for the chance to, 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 to talk here. You're welcome. Thank you for the value. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it brought you some value. If you would like to engage, please leave a comment in the comment section. You can also click the subscribe button and activate notification to receive the updates on this channel.